Hi everybody, welcome to my talk today, tips to help you prepare for a nurse educator interview and questions. And this is part of my nursing career series on my YouTube channel, Support and Career Development for Nurses. And last week I um, did a talk on different nurse educator roles and how to become a nurse educator. And I have talks on nurse researcher roles, specialist nurse and advanced nurse practitioner roles and a sister charge nurse and to senior nurse role. All my videos are free, so just hit the subscribe button. I hope you enjoyed the talk today. So I'm going to go through how to focus your background research and preparation for your interview, what to expect during your interview, how to plan for some interview questions, how to deal with nerves. We all get nervous before interviews and how to learn from interview feedback. So the first thing to do when you are called to an interview, well done, um, but have a look at the type of interview and the format that's being used by the employer. It might be an NHS trust, it could be a nurse education post for a private employer or for um, a university. And ask the HR lead if you're not quite sure about what format they're using. It could be a value based interview, it could be a straightforward face to face interview, there could be group discussion. Most nurse interviews, um, nurse educator interviews require a presentation and I have a separate video, YouTube video on my YouTube channel with lots of tips of how to prepare a presentation for a nursing interview because um, some of you may not have teaching qualifications, for example, and be going for um, a junior nurse educator role. So do check out that video if needed. So the first thing to do is to check what the role actually entails when you're doing your background reading. Um, reading. So you can book an informal visit to the area if it's unfamiliar to you. Even if it's an area that you currently work, it, you still need to really talk to people in the role. It will help you gain some insights to help you for your interview and, and maybe some questions. You could ask them about the local priorities and any current issues linked to education. Um, and any sort of workforce projects or educational projects that are being planned linked to the role. Um, review the job description and personal specification because you'll again see the specific role requirements and employer intranet is helpful um, to look at current training and education hubs and um, Try and book your meetings as soon as possible if you did want to try and um, meet people or virtually book a meeting um, because people are obviously very busy. I have a YouTube video out on different nurse educator roles and how to become a nurse educator and I talk through different career opportunities and you may be applying for a clinical nurse educator type role or practice development nurse where you're supporting staff in a local area with um, inductions or preceptorship for newly registered nurses. Um, it could be more of a corporate or service training and development education role where you're leading a preceptorship program or apprenticeships or support worker training, a clinical skills educator, could be a basic life support trainer, for example. Um, so there's a real vast range of roles out there. So it's definitely worth looking at that video. You could be somebody that's looking at a nurse education lead role, um, looking at delivering education programs or training and development across uh, an employer. And um, there could also be university appointments that you're applying for. So lots of tips in the video. And it's looking at trying to align your transferable skills to the educator role that you're actually applying for. Local and national education standards are very important to look at prior to interview. And note that some of these standards may change. Currently on the NMC website, we have standards frameworks for nursing and midwifery, standards for student supervision and assessment, standards for post-registration, pre-registration, nursing education. So have a look at the standards nationally that are out there. 
on the NMC and NHS Education Department websites. So we have four nations across the UK and where I work in England, there's Health Education England, there's NHS Education for Scotland, Health Education and Improvement Wales and Northern Ireland Medical and Dental Training Agency. So um, these names of um, the NHS education departments are sometimes tweaked and changed, but essentially the information is the same. Look on those NHS education department websites um, and review what is happening in relation to the education standards. Also, local employer intranet training and development hubs um, are very helpful. So when you're looking at your background research, it's important to think, what do you have to do in this role? What are you actually delivering? Um, what tra are you the training development programmes? Is it um, an education role that is more scoping information and assuring standards, mandatory training standards, for example? And it could be an education role where you're delivering a module. So what are you actually de delivering? What are you assessing? What are you monitoring, implementing, evaluating in your role? And that will be evident in your job descriptions. How do you plan to do this? So you need to, to put some thought into thinking, right, I, in this role, I am going to have to deliver this. How would I plan to do this? As these could be potential questions in your interview. What transferable skills are required to deliver um, in this role and identifying practical examples to demonstrate your knowledge, skills and competence related and aligned to the role that you're applying for is important. Employer NHS values reflect on the values, the key targets. It could be a university, an NHS trust or a private employer. Um, mission statement and, and what do they mean to you as you may be asked a question on on their values or nhs values who are you supporting and educating and i've been to many interviews over the years for clinical educator roles and um, sometimes the app the interviewee um, will focus totally on registered nurses, for example, and they won't think about the whole group of student learners that they may have in the role. So you, your role may encompass support workers, um, trainee nursing associates, assistant practitioners, newly registered nurses, and also experienced band five nurses, early career nurses. It could, if you're a band seven, going for a band seven practice development nurse, include band six um, sort of team leader type roles. So it's important to understand the group of learners or staff that you are going to be supporting and educating. And if it's a, a role in university, what level of student will you be um, working with? Is it a first year, second year or final year degree students? Is it master's level students? Um, is it apprenticeships? So um, also what level, academic level, are you going to be teaching at and what educational programmes? So it could be if it's a clinical nurse educator role that you're looking for at a certificate level or study days um, that aren't academically accredited potentially and you're looking at orientations, inductions, it could be a specialist um, short course in your local area to deliver to support workers or to newly registered nurses versus academically accredited courses, which could be a degree level um, course, um, master's or first level six degree. Um, and it, it really is dependent on the actual role. You've got apprenticeship levels as well and NVQ levels and care certificate levels for support workers. And, um, and it's important that you know the difference between those levels. So I know people that have come to interview that are being expected in that role to deliver some teaching on a, um, a post-registration, say neuroscience course at master's level and they, they didn't have any idea what the difference was between 
a master's level teaching and a certificate level, for example, didn't know they were teaching, expected to teach at master's level. So again, it should be in your job description. It's the sort of thing you can ask about if you do an informal visit. So you really understand what are you expected to deliver, what educational programmes and what academic level. You may not be expected to deliver any educational programmes and some clinical nurse educator roles are linked more and aligned to service delivery and quality improvement where you are expected to focus much more on training and support of staff that might need help with their performance and, and skill development. So you're looking at competencies, band five induction level and you're not delivering programmes. How are these programmes currently being delivered or how is the training currently being delivered um, in that role? Is it virtual? Are you expected to deliver some simulated skill sessions? Is it face to face seminars or lecturers or a blended learning approach? How do you assess, monitor and evaluate the training needs of learners um, in the role that you're applying for? And you may need to create or innovate something new to support learners. So if you know that on your informal visit, you ask about these sort of questions and they say, well, yes, we want to set up a, um, a specialist orientation programme for newly registered nurses. Um, it's not academically credited. It would just be some study days that we want you to set up, but it's really flexible how the person who's offered the role sets them up. It gives you loads of information that you might be asked that in interview. How would you set up and create a specialist program for new starter nurses in this area? Um, so very helpful to do that background reading and to do that background reflection on the job description or an informal visit. It's helpful, I think, to use an assessment planning, implement and evaluating approach, like reflecting the nursing process, essentially, um, looking at assessments. So often when you have a clinical nurse educator role or any sort of education position, there may be questions on assessing learners needs. How are you going to assess learners needs? Um, are you going to assess them one to one or across a group? and um, assessing a learner's proficiencies, competencies or observed clinical skills, for example. And then you can do some background reading into competency based assessments. Are you expected to plan teaching programmes in the future or inductions or learner support groups, clinical supervision or action learning sets for, for certain learners in your area? Will, what are you implementing? How are you going to implement and deliver? What will you do if um, you have to deliver this programme might be a question. How will you promote a positive learning environment? So if on your job description, your role is to promote a positive learning environment, you may be asked a question on this of how you're going to um, promote this in, in, a, in, in the area that you're applying for. How will you deal with a learner who is struggling? And, you know, essentially you're going to be using an empathetic approach, finding out why somebody's struggling and use a systematic, compassionate approach with a learner that's struggling. You're setting clear goals um, so that they know achievable goals, um, collaborating with them and with the rest of the team. And you're going to have to think about the professional reviews in the future and have timelines attached to a performance improvement plan, for example. But these are the sort of um, questions that you might be asked according to your role. Evaluate. How are you going to evaluate progress in the role? Um, how are you going to evaluate your teaching or the, your, the impact that you're making in the role? What educational quality standard will be used to measure success? So if you are responsible for training and development, say mandatory training and, and um, education in an area as part of your role, you um, could look at the national standards. What are the safety um, and essential mandatory statutory mandatory training? Go and look at the educational hub. It'll have lots of information on the intranet. And uh, you're measuring success on the compliance link to e-learning and to um, support staff in the area 
to enable them to complete their statutory mandatory um, training, for example. And it will be you, the way your role will be evaluated and the quality of your teaching may be evaluated and your future learning environment will be according to the role that you're applying for. So having done some preparation on what the role entails, the next bit of preparation I would suggest you do is to review educational terms and structures. When you've looked at the job description, there may be certain words that come out at you, such as blended learning. And you might think, well, what on earth is blended learning? I'm not quite sure. You should know, for example, what the difference is between a practice supervisor, practice assessor and academic assessor or other educational roles in the team that you'll be working in. And because, um, you know, some of these are NMC um, defined roles, so you should know what they are. In my book, I'll get a quick plug in uh, my book, How to Prepare for Interviews and Develop Your Career. I have clear tables with key preparation and terms in there linked to nurse educator roles or nurse research or um, advanced nurse practitioner roles in there. Um, also, have a look at teaching, learning theories, styles, models and framework in education. Now, if you've done a teaching certificate or postgraduate diploma in education, you will be doing assignments linked to those theories. Um, but it's helpful to go and ha have a read, um, just a basic understanding. If you haven't done a teaching course, I would strongly advise anybody who wants to um, uh, aspires to doing a nurse educator role to start a teaching certificate or postgraduate diploma in education because it will really help you at interview. With education, it's about assessing, implementing your teaching and your support and evaluative frameworks. So looking up evaluative frameworks, you may see them in your job description, student evaluations. You might be linked to clinical learning environment audits if you're um, a practice development nurse who is leading education across several areas. There may be placement learning environment for students that you may be come involved with. So understanding what they are and having a read around these areas is helpful. Training needs analysis to support clinical practice development budgets and educational funding models may be linked to your role as well. So this is all helpful towards narrowing down some of your preparation. Um, as I said, the terms and structures will depend on your role. So it, it may be helpful to look at no local and national educational institution structures, standards and policies, which I mentioned earlier, the NMC standards, for example. Um, clinical supervision may be part of your role to, to provide some clinical supervision. Your role may link to um, health education or health promotion models. Um, it may link more to quality and service improvement. So again, clinical governance, risk management, audit, change management, quality standards may be terms that you need to look up if that is part of your role. The way that some NHS trusts have set up their nurse educator roles is to really support service managers with clinical governance and risk management. So if you had an increased number of falls in an area, for example, or pressure ulcers, the, the educator would be helping the service manager to support staff in the area and to deliver teaching to help turn around issues linked to quality and promote quality standards. So it very much depends on the type of role that you've applied for. And again, in my book, How to Prepare for Interviews and Develop Your Career, I have tables linked to all of these terms um, to, to sort of summarise and define what these terms mean in a simple, practical way. University exam boards and annual reviews. So if you're applying for a university post, what is an exam board What's, uh, and what is an annual review? What happens? Because that may be part of your role as a lecturer to attend exam boards and annual reviews. Leadership and management terms may be um, part of the role and also providing some research or critical appraisal and evidence based practice. And I do know people at interview that have been asked, um, how would you provide evidence based practice? How would you support evidence based practice? And they obviously would know the answer, but they just go completely blank because the term evidence based practice 
has made them nervous or critical appraisal. And um, so do look up these key terms, especially if they're in your job descriptions. When you're looking at your background research for roles and responsibilities, understanding the roles across the team that you're working may be very important and be part of that job key, key responsibility for that job. So as I said earlier, an informal visit would help you have more insight into the type of teams that you'll be working with if you're unsure. Review some current hot topics. Um, across media and professional journals as you might be asked to discuss a contemporary related subject. For example, with education, we've got a lot of um, debates in our profession about early career support for students near to registering and newly registered nurse preceptorship, how to overcome barriers when delivering virtual teaching, or facilitating positive student learning environments in placement. But go out and have a look at what's specific at the time, what's out there at the time that you're prepping for your interview. Often in any interview, you're asked to reflect on your strengths or your weaknesses. So do it before you go into the interview. Reflect on the key differences from your current role to this new role and the transferable skills that match the new role that will really help you to be effective in this new role. And think about the educational differences, the leadership, if there's any leadership differences. Um, what are you expected to deliver in this new role or as part of the service that worries you most? And sometimes that question is posed as what do you think you'll be most worried in? What do you think you'll need the most support with in this role? Or they might just ask you straight out, what are your strengths or weaknesses? What are your transferable skills? And the key thing here is to think about how you would address the gaps in your knowledge and skills to make up for the for any weakness. We've all got weaknesses. And if you have not, um, you don't have any teaching qualification, it may be um, that you say that, you know, that you're quite open about it and they're going to know anyway because they'll have reviewed your um, your, your qualifications on shortlisting, but that you say that you really um, would aim to be trying to apply for a teaching course whilst in this role to develop those skills, for example. So preparing for interview, often, as I talked about earlier, we have different types of interviews. So it may be a face to face or an online virtual interview. Is it a couple of hours or 30 minutes? Are there scenario based exercises or group discussions? Um, is it a value based interview and do you have to do a presentation? Now, the more competitive the role, the more elements they may have to an interview. And I would say the majority of interviews that um, I've been involved with linked to education and even years ago when I did um, an interview for a lecturer practitioner role, the expectation was to do a presentation. But you may have an interview where you don't have to. Um, be punctual. Always check the location, travel links or Internet connections nowadays with virtual interviews. If you have a virtual interview, make sure you can see your face. The camera is still so you're not doing it on your phone and there's no disturbances or mobiles on. With a value based interview, um, value based interviews aim to select individuals who align most closely with the values of the organisation. And you're usually asked one or two questions and you start with a generic question. So an example might be give me an example where you supported a learner and it led to a positive change. And then you have to think about a practical example that demonstrates um, where you've supported a learner followed by further probing according to your responses. So once you've given um, an example, the interviewer may say, well, you said that your teaching had a positive impact on patient care. How do you know this? Or how did you evaluate your teaching in this situation? So it's really important to have prepared potential example um, practical examples if you are told you are going to have a value based interview and you should be told prior to the interview if it's a value based interview so you can prep for this um, type of scenario. 
Interviewers expect a relevant example that demonstrates your understanding and practical application. So not something where you've observed somebody else teaching. It should demonstrate your um, practically applied skills. Without specific detail, your answer will be rate, rated as low. So when they prompt down with more questions, you need to give a bit more detail. So choose your best examples and think about them before your interview and reflect on some key examples that you think you might be asked relating to your job description. One lead interviewer should chair and manage the time in an interview and there should always be more than one interview uh, interviewer present to um, prevent bias. Interviews viewers will make notes when you answer questions, when you deliver a presentation or lead a group discussion and interviewers usually mark presentations and your interviewer using a scoring tool or assessment scale. So what are interviewers wanting to know at interview? The same for all interviews, that they want to know that you understand what you've applied for, hence the preparation that I talked about earlier. What do you know about education, training and development? How will you deliver what is expected in the role? How is this role different to your current role? Will you be able to manage the responsibilities in the role and achieve a healthy work-life balance. They want to know that you've got the knowledge and skills to do the role. Do you hold the right values, knowledge and skills for an educator role? Do you have the potential and willingness to develop key teaching skills in the future? It could be leadership skills, depending on the role. Do you communicate and collaborate positively with students and colleagues? Can you cope with future challenges relating to the role? And lastly, that you are the best candidate, because they're going to have to pick between candidates. So the questions, the presentation, any group discussion will be um, is there to differentiate between candidates. And they're looking at the job description and key transferable skills that you have. So your past professional experiences and academic courses should align to the role and help inform your answers. So that's why it's really helpful to reflect on what you're currently doing and how it aligns to the role that you're applying for. So helpful tips, prepare some practical examples to market yourself. So think about a training or teaching or something where you've supported or supervised others. That's a really good example. Patient education or health education or promotion, or you might have some digital or clinical academic project work that you've completed. You might have done some leadership management work or a quality improvement project. And I have got um, a video on my YouTube channel on quality and service improvement projects for nurses with some examples. You don't necessarily have to have delivered a quality improvement project, but you may have become um, collaborated and supported one maybe. Um, and I'm not saying you've got to do all of these, um, but these are just some examples that you may have there or not thought about. Improving quality. Um, how do you maintain standards in practice? And, and it could be on a one to one basis where you've got out the local policy and supported a learner in practice. And that might really relate to the role. Evidence based practice and research. Um, publications, networking or policy development, external consultancy, um, volunteer work or charitable work. And on my video, Five Ways to Influence Nursing Practice, I talk about some of these examples. So it may be helpful to look at the video before your interview. Few example generic interview questions, which are about, I mean, this is asked at any interview, which in any nursing role, why have you applied for this role? What qualities do you think make a good, whatever educator it is? It could be university or, or um, clinical nursing educator. What do you know about this role or the employer or the teaching programme or the service? Hence all the information the um, sorry preparation I suggested at the beginning. This is where you will really stand out at interview because you've done that background reading. How will you meet the needs or 
um, of students, learners or the team that you will be supporting or working with because your role might be a more um, supervisory teaching, helping progression with competences as opposed to delivering teaching or it may be a combination, a combination of both. How do you plan to meet the needs of learners who require whatever they need? What will you need the most support with? What transferable skills do you have to support this role? Please, could you give us an example where you've recently delivered and it's whatever is linked in the job description or linked to your key responsibility? Explain how this has impacted on or how you would evaluate this course. And often in interviews, you get a lot more marks when you've thought through the impact of what you're doing. It's almost like the, if you look at Driscoll's model, reflective model, it's the so what. So you've given an example where you supported somebody, but what was the outcome? How was it evaluated? What impact did it have? And that gives you a lot more points at interview. Can you give me an example where you led a teaching session program that positively influenced learners? What is your teaching style? How do you evaluate the quality of your teaching? What educational standards do you adhere to when delivering whatever's in your job description? What would be your first three objectives if offered the role? So if you don't understand or haven't reflected on that job description and you're just going in thinking what you perceive to be a clinical nurse educator role and the, the one of the objectives is to support preceptorship, then your objectives will be much more vaguer, whereas you could be much more prescriptive. What are the key needs of learners? And it could be support workers, it could be trainee nursing associates, it could be apprenticeships, it could be newly registered nurses, but you need to know which learners you're working with. How would you aim to meet their needs? How would you assess their needs or prioritise staff training and development needs in an area? What would you do if? And um, sometimes they'll give you these sort of scenario based questions. So an example one might be, what would you do if a staff member wasn't progressing or was underperforming at work? or one of the clinical nurse educators that you're leading in a team did not meet the requirements of the role. And it's always about using um, um, an empathetic, compassionate approach where you're identifying the needs of that person, finding out what's going wrong. You're looking at performance improvement plans, that goal setting, and you're making it really clear to that person how they could progress, how you're going to support them and how you're going to review progress in the future um, and, and providing additional support to help that person. So but you, you can think about what what would you do if type scenario questions? How would you plan to overcome a barrier relating to and it could be to time, um, service, staffing, resourcing, COVID? Any sort of constraints that could happen are usually linked to sort of scenario based questions. And where do you see yourself in five years? That's a classic question asked in many different types of interviews, not just nursing. So finally, you've got to the day of the interview and you may be dealing with nerves and it's normal to be nervous before an interview and interviewers expect this. And it's the same whatever level of nurse you are. Let the interviewers know if you're really excessively nervous as they can support you. And remember, you've done really well supporting, securing that interview and being shortlisted because um, especially clinical nurse educator roles, practice development nurse roles are often very competitive. Um, so just do your best and ask for more time. If, if your mind goes blank because of nerves, just maybe ask for a little bit more time to reflect on a question. Key tip is the more you prepare, the more confident you will feel. So preparing for potential questions, doing the background reading, having some practical examples to demonstrate your transferable skills is important because you'll be able to recall them at interview if you've done some preparation. You might need to use some mnemonic memory aids in case you go blank. And but just do your best. Put your interview in context. You can apply again later or go for another role elsewhere. 
and um, I know that I had to go for three different interviews before I secured a t my team leader post, for example, and I'd almost given up, but the third time I did it. And with every interview, you will learn um, what worked and what didn't work, and you'll learn to inform future answers. If you're not offered the role, make sure that you request verbal feedback from an interviewer. And I know if you're not offered, it can be really upsetting and you just put the phone down and you don't want to ask questions. Um, employers are not necessarily obliged to offer written feedback, so often it's verbal feedback. Um, and you can ask specific questions like, how could I have improved my answers? What was my strongest or weakest answer? And that's helpful to inform future preparation. Try not to waste time and energy dwelling on what if, if you weren't offered the role. The best thing to do is reflect on your interview feedback to inform your future preparation. You might want to write down the interview questions and feedback because that will help with future interview preparation and you might forget if you leave it too long. You can potentially book a mock interview prior to your next interview. That is absolutely fine to do as long as the person doing the mock interview is not on the interview panel. And the key tips to success are to align your past and current experiences to the role that you're applying for and to look at those transferable skills linked to that job description. Allow time to prepare for your interview and structure your preparation and I've given you lots of tips to do that. Ask for interview feedback if you're not offered the role and it's all about preparation. Do put any comments if you've got any questions in the YouTube comments and or you can contact me on my website or Twitter or Instagram. And good luck if you have a future interview. I wish you all the best in your future careers.